Thank you for joining me as we finish up our series on the books of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Welcome back to Weekly Inspirations. My name is Kegan Harkins, and this is the last lesson in our series of the book of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We're actually looking at 1st John chapter 5, which is the last chapter of the book of 1st John, but we're going to just kind of tuck in 2nd and 3rd John into our discussion of this chapter because they're really, really short books and they tie into this chapter really nicely. So we're just going to kind of talk about it all at the same time. So John ends the book of 1st John by reminding us of what he said at the beginning of the book. He reminds us that God is God. Jesus is the Son of God, and we are to love God because God is love. He reminds us again of what love looks like. And in 1 John 5, 3, he writes, This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. See, if we love the Lord, we want to obey his commands. His will will become our will. We'll pray within his will. We'll live in accordance with his commands. Because the closer we get to God, the more our lives will mimic our Savior. And the more his will will be the only thing that we desire. And I love the end of that verse. I love the reminder that God's commands are not burdensome. And sometimes the world tries to convince us that being a Christian is just about following a bunch of rules. I mean, I've seen it so many times in the comments sections and conversations and stuff that that I have with non-believers that are, are kind of a combative mode. They, they want to describe Christianity as nothing more than a legalistic trap that's meant to oppress us and limit us. And perhaps from the outside looking in, that's the way they see it. But the reality is that the laws of God are meant to protect us, not oppress us. It's the same way that we don't let our children play with matches and we don't let them put their hands on the hot stove. God sets up those boundaries for our benefit. His commands aren't burdensome. They take the burden off of us and they give us life. And when we develop our relationship with God and we trust him and we give control of our life to God, we're given the freedom of faith. We're released from fear and worry because we know that God can handle everything in our lives. Psalms 55, 22 tells us, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God carries us. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll have a life that's void of troubles. He never says that we won't stub our toe. He promises to never let us fall. No matter what, God holds us. Our future's secure. Our eternity is locked in. We can go through anything that God leads us to because God's never going to leave our side. He'll support us and he'll help us no matter what we go through in this life. John isn't telling us that we're going to have a life that never sees trials. Remember, John was the only apostle who's still alive at this point. He had seen his friends persecuted and murdered for their faith. I mean, John himself was beaten. He was boiled in a vat of hot oil. He was imprisoned. Following God may cost us things in this life, but God's commands will never be a burden to us. We'll face trials and struggles in this life, but we can have confidence in the fact that God cares about us and he's going to sustain us through whatever we face. There's this German proverb that it always makes me smile. It says, God gives the shoulder according to the burden. The reason that it makes me smile is because I have pretty broad shoulders, and whenever life feels overwhelming, I know that God will get me through it. But I often think about this proverb, and I just laugh. I think, you know, God, I know that my shoulders are pretty broad, but I think maybe you think they're broader than they are. I don't think that I can really carry this. And then I look in the mirror, and I realize, you know, well, they they are pretty broad. And, and the truth is that 
I've experienced a lot of heartache and a lot of joy in this life, and God has helped me carry all of it. He's never going to give us more than we can handle, but he never promises that we'll have a life that's always easy. You know, in fact, the Gospel of John in chapter 16, at the end of verse 33, Jesus tells us, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. If we love God, we'll love his commands. And the sheer fact that we're obeying God's commands in an ungodly world means that we're going to have trouble in this life. But Jesus has overcome this world. He's not going to give us more than we can handle. He'll give us a way out when we're hard pressed. And following God's commands takes the burden off of our heart because it fills us with trust and hope. Hope in his love poured out through his son, Jesus. And because of this love, we can have confidence. We know that at the end of life, there's something waiting for us. 1 John 5, 12 tells us, He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Now this is where we're going to skip to the book of 2 John. In verses 10 and 11, John writes, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. This is a huge warning. Remember, we talked about this a couple of times in this series that John is writing these books in response to this Gnostic movement that was teaching that Jesus was never physically man. And they taught that he was simply projected into the human experience they taught that humanity could you know achieve perfection on an intellectual standpoint without actually having to live their lives the right way so if you believed it or you knew it you received it however your body could indulge in all the sinful actions that it wanted to and it didn't affect your witness or your righteousness or the outcome of your eternity So God was writing these books in direct competition to that. The Gnostics were teaching the same message that our world teaches now. The idea that if it feels good, do it. All roads lead to heaven. Whatever works for you is best. Those are still the same tactics that Satan uses to try to get us onto the wrong path. And John is warning us, don't welcome in false teachers. If someone is teaching something other than God loved us, he sent his son, fully God, fully human, in the form of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Flee. Don't welcome them in. Don't give them an opportunity to pollute your life and your faith. Verse 7 is pretty, or verse 11 is, is pretty important for us to really grasp. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. Sometimes we think that it's a lot easier to just ignore it like it doesn't exist. But when we stand silent in the face of a teaching that comes against what we know to be true, and we don't challenge a teaching that says Jesus was just a good man or a powerful prophet that that denies the deity of Jesus, we're sharing in their wicked work. If we're silent, we're saying it's okay. We have a responsibility in our relationship with God. God loves us and he demands that we be obedient because of that love. In the book of 3 John in verse 11, John writes, Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. We have a responsibility to show our obedience to God and our love and honor for him and his commands by standing up and not imitating the evil that's all around us. It's easier to go with the flow. We make less waves when we go in the same direction as everybody else, but that's not what God has called us to do. God's called us to stand up and be different, to hold tighter onto the love of our Savior than onto the love of this world. We have a responsibility to do good and bear good fruit. The legacy that follows after us shows the world to whom we really belong. 
And if we're God's children, we're going to behave like our Heavenly Father. And the last part of 3 John 11 reminds us, anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. The world is full of people who've not seen God. So let's show them. God's love brings peace and joy and happiness. It helps us carry the burdens of life. It gives us hope and a confidence in the future. Why wouldn't we share that? But if we aren't different than every other voice in the crowd, if we aren't behaving differently than everyone else, then we aren't showing people anything different than what the world has to offer. I hope that this lesson series has encouraged you. Be bold in your love for the Lord. Be strong in your faith. Trust in God. Be confident in your future. Be obedient to his commands. And love, 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 love your enemies, love your brothers, love your neighbors. Love the people in the world with the same fervor and love that God poured out on us. Let's shine our light into the darkness so that people see God. So that love wins and darkness flees. Thanks for joining me for this study of the books of second, first, second, and third John. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that God has touched you through the study of his word. Just a real quick reminder, there are free worksheets that go with this lesson as well as the entire lesson series available on our website, Hebrews4Ministries.com. Thank you for joining me for this journey into God's Word and from all of us here at Hebrews 4 Ministries. Have a truly blessed day. 